Traders Corner is proudly brought to you by IG, the specialists in CFD trading. Welcome to Traders Corner. As always, we're joined by Garth McKenzie, who is, of course, the founder and editor of Traders Corner. Garth, nice to see you again. Hi, you too. <laughs> Garth, so last week I missed an option structure that you put on, on for the portfolio. Um, can you just uh, refresh our memories as to what it was all about? Somewhat complex, but you were thinking of doing it before I went away. Yes, that's right. I was thinking of it. Um, so last week we discussed this in, in great depth of the, of the construct of what made up this option structure. This week, I'm not going to go into all the great, great detail about it. I think viewers who do want to have a look at how this thing was constructed can go in and have a look on the website either on Business Day TV's website or on traderscorner.co.za and you can play the video back to yourself as many times as you like to watch how this <laughs> thing is constructed. And I also wrote a blog article about it which is also on my website. Yeah. So uh, you know, if you want to look at the, the technical details of how this thing was constructed you can do that. Um, but what I've got on the screen here really is just the net payoff effect of this option structure. Uh, and what we've got along the bottom axis here are the levels of the top 40 index. So we've got 35,000, 36,000, 37,000 and so on. And then on the, on the upper or the, the Y axis over here is the, um, the profit and loss chart. So th this payoff here basically illustrates the net effect of this option structure. Mm -hmm. What you can see is that above 39,800 here, we've got a, a fixed amount of loss that we would incur yep. on this structure. It comes in at a total of 6,600 Rand. That's how much we would lose if the market was to remain strong and continue moving higher. If we were to start coming down, then this structure starts to make profits below 39,800. And you can see the, you know, the structure makes profits all the way down to 37,000 on the index where we, makes, uh, we make our maximum profit mm -hmm. of 53,000 Rand. And then that profit begins to get eroded and we start to lose money on it below uh, 34,350. And basically my thinking here was that if we were to stage some sort of a pullback during the next few months, uh, bear in mind that this structure runs out to, uh, to the December futures closeout. If we were to see some market weakness during that time, then this structure would work very nicely for us. But if the market continues to remain strong, then obviously it's not going to cost us much. We've got a very fixed loss on this, on this structure. And it's graphically illustrated there Yeah, th this is looking at an, another way here because what, what we've got here is effectively that's that same option structure just turned on its side. Um, and it's overlaid on the chart of the top 40 index itself. So if you have a look here, we've got this channel that the market's been trading in within the, over the last two years or so. Mm. We're up bumping towards the top of that channel at the moment. And if at some stage we were to come down towards the bottom of that channel, you can see this green triangle here illustrates the profitable area for our option structure and it, w it would make its most profit at 37,000. So really it's quite a nice uh, hedge really to have on in the background in the possibility that we do see some market weakness in the next couple of months. Mm. If not, if the market continues to go higher, well then we, we lose our 6,600 Rand. We know that it's less than 2% of our portfolio and quite happily we can live with that. Um, but it's nice to have this bit of downside. And for me, this is the way I prefer to trade the, mar trade the market on the short side, mm. rather than trying to put in a naked short position, which gives you unlimited losses if the market continues to go higher. Yeah, which of course will lead us at some point to our discussion about the share you're going to uh, look at this week. Uh, yeah. There are a lot of uh, corpses of short sellers in, in that particular trading arena. Yeah. Um, Garth, but uh, the action of the market over the last couple of days, um, it has been a bit softer, it's yeah. been a bit weaker today. Um, everyone seems to be you know, waking up to the realization that um, the US debt standoff is not a very good thing at all. So has it, has it confirmed your view that we may be in for a pullback? I mean, if you had to take an updated look at the top 40, what does yeah. it tell you? Well, well the top 40 chart um, is shown on the screen at the moment. And what I see here is it, it, certainly we've been trending up since the middle of June. Yeah. And if you have a look now, it looks as if we've actually now begun to break down, down through that upward trend. Um, it's early days yet, you know, to see whether this break is really confirmed, whether we're going to see significantly more downside from here or not. It remains to be seen. I mean, one might also argue that this is just a little small falling wedge within the overall uptrend and we're going to have another leg to the upside. Mm. It's quite possible. Um, I'm not really sure. But certainly there is a rather risk off feel to the markets at the moment, given what's happening in the US, given that we're now into the eighth day of the US government shutdown. And then, of course, the bigger issue is the looming debt ceiling, which is, you know, that date, the deadline date there is the 17th of October. Mm -hmm. And um, 
and that is is getting ever closer and it doesn't look right now as if there's a solution in sight and the markets i think you're right are starting to slowly but surely get a little bit more concerned about this issue i think there's been a fairly complacent attitude mm. by the market you know before this it's it's been a case of you know this this debt ceiling issue keeps coming up and it keeps getting resolved and what are we really fussing about but this time it actually appears as if they're going to push us to the brink and um, and and you know a worst case scenario would be that the US were to default on its debt which is you know the consequences of that are unthinkable so it's it's highly unlikely that we would get to that point but mm. you know you can never say never yes, in the market. Yes, especially when it comes to politicians. Exactly. Uh, and, and you're starting to get Japan and China, who are huge creditors, um, thinking, hmm, this is not good, and they've already voiced public dismay at the situation. So, uh, yeah, so things mm. to worry about. Yeah. Look, anyway, I mean, certainly the markets are feeling a bit weak at the moment, given that backdrop. If they come to some sort of a resolution, then I would imagine you'd probably find some sort of a knee-jerk reaction. The markets would probably mm. kick higher. But... <laughs> You know, we live in interesting times, <laughs> and, um, and 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 I'd, I've, I've read in a number of places that there's a zero percent probability that the U.S. will default, but I, I don't think it's ever zero percent probability. You know, you've got to remember, in the market, anything can happen, and although it's highly, highly unlikely that they will mm. default on their debt, you can't rule it out entirely. No. Okay. So we've got this insurance policy for ourselves in place. Okay. Um, now, talking about naked shorts, which always sounds rather exciting, but mm. actually isn't if you're in that particular position. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you were shorting Naspass, uh, yeah. you'd not be a very happy punter indeed. Yeah. Now, you're actually going long of Naspass. Yes. This is, um, tell us about this week's trade. Yeah. So we are going long of Naspass, and I know a lot of people will probably bulk at the idea and say, how can you possibly be buying Naspers? It's run so hard. But I think the, the important differentiator to point out here is, you know, we, we're traders on this show. We take a trading view. We're not investing. Mm. Okay, if you want to invest in Naspers now, I think it's 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 hell of a overvalued, and it probably, to me, doesn't really represent a wonderful investment prospect. But if you're a trader, which we are, you're playing the short-term movements in the market. Um, and you're looking at dynamics between buyers and sellers and momentum and that sort of thing. And, and, and if a trade is wrong, you cut it and get out. Remember I said to you a few weeks ago, trading is like the dating game. Mm. It's not the marriage game. So that's what we're doing here. So if we look at the chart of, of NASPAS here and why I'm thinking it's time to go long on this stock. Um, there's the chart over, that's a year to date chart for, t for 2013. Um, you can see the uptrend which is intact over there, which has been tested over the last week or so. That uptrend support comes in at 930 Rand. Um, and what I want to do now is actually zoom in on that area where I've put a little box around that trading zone. Um, because effectively what I'm seeing there is a pattern of consolidation mm -hmm. over the last couple of weeks or so. And that to me is actually quite a healthy sign. The fact that this stock has been consolidating, holding up at the higher levels, it's actually been relatively strong in a, in a fairly weak market over the last couple of days. And that to me it tells me that there's inherent strength in this stock and the probability of a break higher is, is there. And it's also been, uh, that's quite consistent with its trading action over the last few years. And I remember last year when you bought into NASPASS, it was always uh, during or after a period of consolidation yeah. because it does have a tendency to do that, consolidate yes. and then yeah. break up. One of my favorite trades to do is to, to find a stock that's in a strong trend and see it having consolidated for a period of time, effectively catching its breath, and then you get in, get on board for the next leg higher in mm -hmm. that stock. And that's what I'm effectively looking to do here. So I wanna zoom in on that shorter term area of trade, and now we're looking really over the last six or six or seven weeks of trade, really. Um, what I can see here is a, a triangle pattern that's been unfolding on, on NASPIS. And um, Typically, these triangle patterns will break in the direction of the trend. Two out of three times, they break in the direction of the trend. Obviously, that also means one out of three times, they break the other way. Mm. But that's a 66% probability that it will break higher from here, which to me is a pretty good probability, and I'll take that trade. So what you usually do is you take the height of the triangle at its broadest point, mm -hmm. and then you project it up from where a breakout occurs. And that, in this instance, gives us a target of 1,000 Rand. Now, I know there's been people uh, saying, that, you know, is it on its way to 1,000? And uh, my sense is that you prob it, it could well get to 1,000 and go up and touch that level. Um, it's, it's, it's certainly getting to very lofty levels. But my feeling, as we said at the beginning, is that th there are a lot of corpses of people who've been out shorting the stock. And 
and I think there's still potential okay, for so a short squeeze. Okay, so do you think there are still short sellers um, in NASPAS who, yeah. are, who are yet to be squeezed? Yes, I okay. think there are. I, th I think the fact that it hasn't been coming down with the market over the last couple of days tells you that, that there's still buying pressure there. And if it's not natural buyers, I think that the short sellers could still give us a nice push to the upside here, potentially. Okay, so you have um, put on a long for the portfolio. I have, yeah. I've gone long at 942 Rand, um, and then I've put a stop loss at 919 Rand. Um, and if we look at our risk to reward ratio, the, the red and green blocks that I like to use to illustrate this, you can see the red block there illustrates the risk. That's mm -hmm. the difference between our entry price and our stop loss. And the green block represents our potential reward if it was to get up to our 1,000 Rand target price then um, that's, the, that's the reward. And you can see just by eyeballing that the reward is uh, about two and a half times bigger than the risk. Okay, so in greater mechanics, uh, Garth? All right, so we bought it at 942 Rand. The stop loss is at 919 Rand. So that means our risk per share is 23 Rand. Uh, I'm risking only 1% of our capital on this trade. The reason being that I am a little bit concerned about the overall background of the markets that, uh, and issues emanating out of the US and so on. So I'm not taking a huge risk here, just 1% of our trading capital. Um, basing it off 360,000 Rand of capital, that means we can risk 3,600 Rand. That basically means that's how much money we're willing to lose if this trade goes wrong. Yeah. Um, so I divide the risk, the, the capital risk divided by the risk per share, and that gives me a number of 156 shares. So I've rounded it up in this case to, to 160 CFDs, which I've done for our portfolio. The target, as I said, is a thousand rand per share, and therefore my risk to reward ratio on this trade is one to two and a half. Okay, <laughs> when you said, uh, when you reminded us about your analogy with the dating game, it made me think of Nuspass as one of those spiders that eats their um, partner after they've <laughs> had their wicked way with them. So hopefully it doesn't happen to us. <laughs> um, Garth, so what does the portfolio look like at the moment then? Well, it's looking very good. We had a, at a new high for the year on our portfolio. We're sitting at 367,000 Rand. So that's up 47% for the year to date. You can see some of the recent trades that we've had, uh, some Aussie 40 trades, some uh, Rand dollar exchange rate trades there. There's our option structure which we put on last week, uh, which is working nicely. Bear in mind we're short on the top 40 there from 39,800 as part of that option structure. Um, and as I looked at it today, the top 40 was trading down at 39,000. So we're 16,000 Rand mm. to the good on that trade. And, uh, and then the NASPAS trade that we've put on today is, is there at the bottom as well. Okay. All right. So uh, portfolio looking pretty good. And then yeah. to end off with, you've got trading courses and also um, a new sort of interactive session, yes. which I'd like you to tell us about. Yeah. So trading courses, I'm, I'm down in Cape Town this weekend on the 12th of October to Saturday. There still is space available on that course for anybody that would like to attend. Um, I know the people in Cape Town are often slow to take me up on these courses, so I'm hoping we'll have a light, late last minute flurry of activity here. And then I've got another Understanding CFDs course in Johannesburg on the 7th of November. And then, yeah, the new initiative that I'm starting is something called Traders Corner Face-to-Face -face Sessions. And what this is, it's a live session um, where d delegates can come, uh, we, we're doing the first one in Johannesburg on the 31st of October. Um, it's it's a live environment. You're there. I, I'll present for about 20 minutes on a topical issue relating to the market at the time, and then we'll have about an hour to an hour and a half of open debate questions. Okay. I'll be there with my charts and analysis and so on. People can ask questions. We can debate issues, discuss things, and and hopefully ultimately come out with some greater knowledge of the market and all learn from each other. And a slightly more informal way of doing these things. Yeah, it's 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 a. You know, something I think is different to your bog standard PowerPoint presentation that every other broker in town is doing. Um, this is actually something interactive. You can come, you can sit, you can listen, you can debate with me, you can debate with each other. Mm. Um, it's really there for everybody to learn and for everybody to go home and take some, some additional knowledge away. Um, the sessions do cost 200 Rand per head okay. and anyone that's interested in, um, in attending, go to my website traderscorner.co.za and you will see there's a, a link there to the new face-to-face -face sessions and you can register for it there. Okay, great, Scott. We have to leave it there. Nice to be back on the show. Um, we'll see you next week. Thanks. That's Scott McKenzie, founder and editor of Traders Corner. Traders Corner is proudly brought to you by IG, the specialists in CFD trading.